Here we are at the start of December. It is starting to look like Christmas. <laughs> Imagine Santa Claus having a beard like this. I'm John Zadar. I am the host of On Top and Hot. And we are going to be taking a look at some hot OTC and penny stocks today. But it's going to be a little different. Normally, I share the hot penny stocks I find through my excursions of trading penny stocks through the day. No, this time we're going to look at viewer requests. Now, I do normally answer these on the social platforms I find them. I'll give them a nice write-up on what I think about it. And of course, a lot of them will bring them to me in our live streaming event on Thursday, 4 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. But that's like only an hour long, and you can only look at so many stocks in an hour. So since I've got this video channel, I figured I might as well look at some here as well, right? First stock we're going to take a look at is RSPI, Respire RX Pharmaceuticals. This comes by way of Penny Stalker Channel. They suggested it, and I agree with you. I think it's a good one to consider. RSPI was running hot the other day, the 29th. She was running hot not because of her own catalyst, but because of VVOS. VVOS had news come out from the FDA about their sleep apnea drug. Well, this company's working with a sleep apnea drug as well. So it was running in sympathy. So while VVOS went from about, I don't know, 7 or $8 all the way up to $41, woo! <laughs> this one was running as well. She was going between 350 to 400% gains before she started coming back down. Now, sleep apnea is a huge problem, folks. This is uh, when people go to sleep, they don't breathe right. It's not just about snoring. It's more complicated than that. And really, the only way we know how to deal with it is by giving them apparatuses to wear. These octopuses on their face, these trunks that hang out in front of them like elephants. And no matter how small they make them, just so they go in your nose and not your whole face, it's still hanging on your face. Kind of tough to sleep. So anybody who can come up with an oral pill for sleep apnea is going to get rich and get rich fast. So RSPI finished the day today at 00135 and she's fallen just under 20%. And that is bouncing between 15 and 18% as I've been making this video. She's on the pink tier. She's current. We've got one piece of validated information, a transfer agent verified. We don't have the verified profile. I make a big deal about these, especially with pinks, because pinks have no validated information. They're the riskiest stocks that you're going to trade. I have lost more money on pinks than anything else. So you've got to be smart trading pinks. We have one piece of validated information over here, and don't take that for granted. A transfer agent is very important. The other one is a verified profile. We would like to see it. Not a deal breaker, but it's definitely more reassuring. So let's get some information here about the company and then we'll grab more as we go along. They tell us here that the company is a biopharmaceutical company focused on the discovery and development of novel drug therapies for the treatment of sleep apnea, ADHD, spinal cord injury, and other neurological conditions. So what was the relative volume around the company? Woohoo, she exploded today. Oh, shame it's going in the wrong direction, though. She jumped from about 9 million to 76 million shares today. Share structure for Respi. Outstanding share count is about 350 million. We don't know what the float is. They tell us it was 77 million back in May of 2022, but I don't know if I'd trust that. So it could be anywhere up to 349 million, or it could be anywhere below that as well. Market cap for the company is pretty low. We're just over a half a million dollars. Now, that's not a problem on the OTC. They don't have a criteria. It's just really low. Financials for the company, nada on the annual, nada on the quarterly, because they're research and development. They don't have any products that they're selling yet, so they're not making any revenues. They got to keep generating revenues by either doing public offerings and getting money from us or finding big investors. Let's take a look at their balance sheet and see what they're holding. They're not holding very much. Cash and cash equivalents, it's not $7. It is $7,000. Thank God we got to add three zeros to any of the numbers down here. Total assets, $141,000. Total liabilities, oh my God, $12.2 million. Subtract the assets from the liabilities. You end up with stockholder equity, not hardly, Stockholder deficit. We're holding a bag of over $12 million right now with the company. Looking at the disclosures, 
We've got a recent 10Q here, which came out halfway through November. Oh, that's interesting. It's a 10Q, not a disclosure. We are looking at a pink on the OTC. Most pinks have disclosures, which have no validated information in them. No CPA goes to those numbers. 10Qs, you've got to have a CPA go through them. Now, there are different ways to audit yourselves, to have your financials go through. And the companies can apply to have more transparency. This company has applied to be more transparent, and they are. They've got 10 Qs, not disclosures. Let's go take a look at that news now. All right, all of this news is old starts or ends, whichever way you want to look at it, May of 2022. But we've got one piece here, which came a little ways back. This came out October 12th. Now, let's see if I can get through this without getting tongue-tied. The company, through its subsidiary, Resolution RX, which is a private company down in Australia, has entered into a master service agreement for Dronabino manufacturing and related services. Now, Dronabino is the drug they're working on, and I'm going to call it Drona for short so I don't get tongue-tied on that. The company is focused on the discovery and development of innovative and revolutionary treatments to combat diseases caused by disruption of neuronal signaling. Their private Australian company has entered into a master service agreement with another Australian company called AB Initio Pharma. They did this October 9th. AB Initio will manufacture, formulate, test, and supply the company with therapeutic drugs based on lipid nanoparticle technology, which is licensed by the company. The initial service relates to the company's repurposing of Drona and its development program for obstructive sleep apnea. They are repurposing Drona. The thing here is, is that Drona has already been approved by the FDA. She's gone through all of her phase trials. She was approved for OSA. I don't have a clue what that is. Then she was approved for other indicators, other purposes. I don't know what they are either. But this company wants to repurpose the same exact drug for sleep apnea. They want to create a pill for people so that they don't have to wear that big old trunk on their face when they're trying to sleep. Ab initio will manufacture and test our new Drona lipid nanoparticle formulation. The initial term of the master service agreement is for two years and can automatically renew for one-year periods. With its formulation expertise and GMP manufacturing facilities, that means they're approved to operate, Ab initio will complete our original laboratory experiments to determine a final optimum Drona formulation, scale it up, and manufacture that chosen formulation for clinical use. The lipid nanoparticle technology not only represents a major step forward in the development of Drona, but the potential for more widespread use for insoluble and poorly soluble drugs. This nanotechnology takes big molecules and shrinks them, makes them real small molecules so we can absorb them better. That just makes medicines work better. And if it's going to work for their drug, it could work for a lot of other drugs. And they can make money just licensing out that technology. Now, I've got a few other pieces of information here I want to share with you that I got over from their most recent financial. Right here, they tell us about the repurposing of the drug that it was originally for OSA, then it got approved for other indications, and it is approved by the FDA. They tell us they've got three subsidiaries, and they've separated them. Uh, they are Respire RX, Resolutions RX, and Endeavor RX. They also tell us down here that they have qualified for an Australian rebate, a tax incentive for research and development. And they qualify to cover about 50% of their research and development, 43.5%. And on top of that, we have one letter of intent, two, three letters of intent with Radium Capital, Cathenian Capital, and Viridian Capital. These are companies that are going to help them with capital. <laughs> They're going to either buy shares or make loans, whatever it is, they are going to assist them. So the company's got other drugs in the pipeline, but this is what's going on right now. This is what we're focusing in on. There's a lot more due diligence you can do, but as you can see, she's got a hot product here. If she can get this on the market, it will be big. As you saw with VVOS, jumping from $8 to $41, just getting some good news from the FDA. Let's go take a look at the chart for this company now. 
we're going to do our charting now on my free trading platform, Think or Swim. Now, I do want to look at Respi, but we're going to look at VVOS first. Voss was the catalyst for Respi. So before her run started, she was down here at $3.92. I caught her pre-market at $8. Then I caught her somewhere through the day at about $41. Bucks. But she continued on her way to $48.79. Between this low bubble and that high bubble is over 1,200% gains. She has come back down. She's come down through her 200 and it looks like she's still falling. But look at her price, $19.90. When just a few days ago, she was at $3.92. That shows you the potential behind an oral drug for sleep apnea. All right, let's take a look at Respi now. This is a six-month, four-hour view. We've got our high back in May of just under $0.02 cents at 1.9, and that was pretty short-lived. It was a big run. She ran here from about 003 up to that high. You're looking at 600 700% run. She came down real quick and hard and below where she started. And she just kept falling. And here at the end of October, she hit her ultimate low of triple zero six. But as you can see, the volume is coming into the picture right now. There has been lots of volume. She has gotten over top of that 50. And once she got up there, she started beating her head on that 200. You could tell she wanted to climb. And then she broke out three days ago. She was at 001 and hit an ultimate high here of 0043, 430% run right there before she came back down. Right now, she's actually sitting on top of her 20, not the 200, but she is over the 200. Our oscillators are getting weak now. Our PPO is falling, our MACD has got a crossover, and our RSI has fallen out of the overbought down to 50. Taking a look at our 20-day, one-hour view, well, she was under everything back here at this low bubble, slowly and methodically working her way across each one of these SMAs. Look at this big bar. First time she gets over the 200, she shows excitement. And she is fighting that 200 for days and days, and then the rip came, and you know the story there. And you can see we are way above the 200, but we are under the 50 right now. Our oscillators are all negative. We have a crossover on our PPO, percentage price oscillator. That's a lot like your MACD. You read them the same. The MACD uses the whole price. The percentage price oscillator uses a percentage of the price. And our RSI now is clear down at 44. Taking a look at our five day, five minute. So our low bubble is 001, boom. We hit a high here of 0037, came down. You can see she respected that 50 completely, bounced off of it, came back down to it, and then we had this huge rip right when our 200-day SMA came into the picture. It's like it was running away from the 200 because I've got a theory. Every time a new SMA appears on the board, the price goes to it. Nine out of 10 times. What happened here? She tried to run away, but the magnet caught her, the gravitational pull. <laughs> just sucked her right on in. Boom! Right down there. And she laid on that, shaking her head, and now she's fallen underneath it. Now we've got another SMA that just came into the picture, our 200 haul. This is very much like your 200-day SMA. It takes 200 days of prices, averages them all together, but then gives more credence to current prices. So you end up with a completely different line. And penny stocks are respecting the 200 haul. And a lot of people don't use that on their charts. So our price right now has crossed the 20. The 200 haul is on top of the 9, but underneath the 50. So she, she is in a fight right now. Our oscillators are a bit cool. Our PPO is going sideways. Our MACD is going sideways. And our RSI is bobbling sideways. So she has potential, folks. If she can come up with a fix. If they can do whatever they need to do, this new company is going to test and create a new formulation. And I don't know if they have to take this new drug into FDA trials for this indicator or if it can just be approved. I really don't know. But I do like what I'm seeing. And the next time OVVS or VVOS gets news, this could run again. So I would put this on my watch list. Not that she's probably going to run tomorrow or the next day, but when she runs, she does run. <laughs>
Well, this was an interesting stock to look at. First time I had ever seen it. This is Gex Management, ticker GXXM. And this comes to us from Vitaly P1000. Let's see what you got for us, Vitaly. Gex Management, she finished the day really cheap, triple zero two, but she had a great day. She went up 100%, jumping from triple zero one, which is the absolute cheapest you can buy a stock for on the open market. And if you get lucky enough to get triple zero one for your buy, you'll get a million shares for a hundred bucks. It's a lot easier to get triple zero two. That'll give you 500,000 shares for a hundred bucks. And then you can help someone make a hundred percent who did get lucky enough to buy them at triple zero one. She is on the pink tier. She's current. She's got a transfer agent verified, but she doesn't have a verified profile either. So what does Gex Management do? Well, they tell us they're a professional employer organization. They provide their clients staffing and professional services, including IT support, infrastructure, accounting, bookkeeping, payroll and benefits, human resources, business consultation, and optimization. They do it all for the companies, everything, including the staffing of even their CEOs and CFOs, which they say are making them a lot of money. I guess headhunting is profitable. So what was the relative volume around the company today? E-gads, look at the drop there. We went from about 26 million shares down to 2.3 million shares. Must be some bad news out there. Share structure for the company. Wow, wow, that's a ton of shares. All right, outstanding share count is really high. We got 2 billion. But considering that they've got 100 billion authorized, they could put those on the market if they wanted to. We don't have a lot of shares on the market. Yeah, right. Insiders have got 1.4 million of those shares. We get all the rest over 2 billion shares in the float. Now, since we are talking about the share structure, we got a filing we need to consider here. They have just authorized a reverse stock split. They didn't give us a date. It's going to be done at management's discretion. And it can be up to 1 and 10,000. It is a huge reverse stock split. They want to get the price up to a dollar. If you are at 0001, you need a 1 in 10,000 to get up to a dollar. They think that they can get away with this doing a 1 in 3,000 up to 1 in 5,000 reverse split. So either way you look at it, it's going to be a big one and we don't know when it's going to happen. Now, after this reverse split, if they do a 1 in 10,000, it is going to only be 208,000 shares out of 2 billion down to 208,000. Now, my concern is when you have that many authorized shares and all of a sudden your outstanding share count is under a million the first thing you're going to do is a public offering to make some money. You got to get that share structure back up, right? I'm not saying they're going to do that, but that's my suspicion. Market cap for the company is way down there, 208000 And as soon as they do a reverse split, that's going to be cut down by 10000 And that's going to be way too small. And they're going to have to do a public offering just to lift their market cap. So I see that happening after the reverse stock split. Financials for the company. Well, they are making money. Over the last four years, it's been virtually doubling every year. And at the end of 2022, they were at $2.2 million, getting to keep about half of it, $1.1 million. Quarterly reports. They're doing steady business, about five fifty, six hundred thousand every quarter. They're taking home profits, and the profits are growing. The last one, they were up to three hundred and twenty-one thousand. Balance sheet for the company: cash and cash equivalents, what they got in the bank, about one hundred and seven thousand. Total assets: six hundred and thirty-two thousand. Total liabilities: four hundred and ninety-five thousand. It's not a lot of big numbers, but at least we're at positive stockholder equity, $137,000 up. Taking a look at the disclosures, we've got a few of them over here that are current. We've got an 8K. This has to do with them changing their accountant. And then we've had that reverse split I was just telling you about. 
And then we've got a financial. And since the company has no news whatsoever over here to share with you, nothing current, this goes back to 2019 and there's no other news. The only thing we really have is that financial. So we're going to jump into this and grab a few bullets of information. Now we just saw their financials. They were current. They did $600,000 this last quarter. Well, compared to the same quarter last year, they're down $40,000. But if you look at the last nine months of this year compared to the last nine months of last year, we're up 70 thousand dollars so you know we're just kind of going sideways pretty evenly but here's the big impression point net loss dropped a lot the nine months of this year compared to the same nine months of last year we dropped from five hundred and seventy two thousand dollars net loss over a half a million dollars they were losing down to just over seven thousand that is a huge improvement absolutely so they give us some information down here about the company because we only got a little bit. First off, they tell us that we have some new management. Uh, I was asked to look into the management. The only management I see here is Siri Vanamali. This is the CEO and I don't see anybody else. I don't see any other names. I don't see any other officers. I did see one over here looking at the front. You can come over here to company profile and come down. There he is, Siri Vanamali and Shahid Bailey. I don't know who Shahid is, but that's the only management I see. And he's taking the helm. He's driving this company right now. And it started all the way back in 2019. They had three phases of restructuring this company, getting it to the point of profitability. And the very first thing they did was to buy this uh, VC-backed social video platform. That was the very first thing they did. And then from there, they started moving on. And they tell us here that GEX has been in talks with multiple companies to identify synergistic acquisition opportunities to fuel organic and inorganic growth and fulfill the corporate objective of becoming a top tier business and technology focused firm while also developing long term and sustainable technology centric business model. Now let's break that down just a little bit. The company plans to deepen its expertise in key sectors such as healthcare and technology, while also expanding into new sectors such as retail, industrials, and consumer goods. Additionally, GEX management plans to develop new partnerships with technology vendors and other service providers to offer its cli clients a broader range of solutions. Now, these are the three phases, very briefly. Phase one started in 2019, building up management consultant business model. Up here, they give you a lot of information about that. They are putting in uh, offices, uh, people in businesses and sectors that have lots of influence, lots of connections, so that they can create business. Phase two started in 2020. Uh, that was building partnership models to expand into the enterprise and corporate client base. And then phase three involves building out a proprietary AI power technology platform. And this is real important to them. They tell us that the development of the AI power technology platform is a key component of GEX management's value proposition to strategic and private equity clients. They're going to use the AI for their own personal business. They're not going to use it for others to use like all these other companies are. They want it to think for them, to come up with ideas, the best ways to serve their clients, save them money, all that sort of thing. Now, to give you an idea of their end clients, who their services are actually helping, they are dealing with companies like Salesforce, Anthem, Walmart, United Airlines, Disney, Marriott, Paramount, Morgan Stanley. So they've got some huge clients. They tell us here that in addition to these planned strategic growths and initiatives, their next stage is to improve the balance sheet, which you see they're doing that. They're cutting down expenses and everything. They're trying to eliminate debt. And they tell us here that as a result of these actions, GEX management has been able to significantly reduce liabilities from 
7.1 million in fiscal year 2021 down to 1.8 million in 2022. There's another serious decrease. And they tell us that finally they want to start adding equity and non-toxic debt instruments, but they haven't done any of that yet. They tell us right here, no material agreements have been executed by the company during this reporting period. So it would be in here if they had any of that to say. So that's what's going on with the company. They are building up their company, building up a client base. And I did read here somewhere about them working with CEOs and CFOs, and that is making them a lot of money. That has actually propelled them faster than they thought it would. So let's go take a look at the chart now and see what we can find over there. We're now taking a look at ticker GXXM. We are looking at a three-year, one-week chart because I looked at this before and I didn't know how far back it was. We looked at this back in August of 2021. Looks like she was somewhere near the price of uh, four cents and she ran up to 18 cents. Whoa, that was a nice call. Then she came all the way back down and you can see it looks like she's been real flat, but if we get close, we can get a much better view here. So let's come on down to that one year, one day so we can get a 52 week high and low. So we've got a 52 week high here. This happened back in March of this year at 0015. <laughs> and it tells me here our low is zero, zero. I, it was on the floor, triple zero one. Let's just say that. You can see she has been deep underneath the 200 for a very long time. And right now we can see there is some squeaking going on, pushing up towards it. Even our oscillators look a little bit stronger on our one day, one year chart. Coming down to that six month, four hour view. So now we've got a high here of double zero one two. We had a serious rip. This came from triple zero two all the way up to double zero one two you're looking at about 600 percent gains right there came back down through the 200 hit that zero low see there that's what it says bounced off of that came back into the living world of triple zero one floated there and right now she's right at triple zero one and two which is a very low spot you normally don't see a lot of movement on these triple zero stocks it can take a very long time for them to move she is at least set up for a breakout. We've got our 200 right there on top. She's hit it a few times. Volume isn't really there to help us out, but you can see she is trying to get up over it. And I let's see, where's that? We are right on the 200 right now. So it is possible we could have a breakout. Now what's a breakout at triple zero? Triple zero four, triple zero five maybe, but at this price, that would be 100, 150% gains, right? Absolutely. Our osculators, before I run away, our PPO is strong. That's pushing up. I like that. Our MACD is pushing up with green bars getting bigger. And our RSI has jumped from 48 up to 60. It doesn't look bad. It doesn't look hot, but it looks warm. Looking at our 20-day, one-hour view. All right, we are down here at the triple zeros and what you're gonna get is no middle ground. It's either one or zero or two or zero. <laughs> it's not supposed to be zero, one or two. And that's what you get. You can see she's going sideways, but she's gotten up on top of the 200 more so than she was here. She was breaking it, but she was under it. Now she's getting over it. Our 50 day is just about ready to cross the 200 and our 20 day is already crossed. Looking at our five day, five minute. All right, it's hard to read. Let's squeeze this in. This is really what we're looking at. We don't have a 200 day SMA. We've got a 50. We're on the floor. Triple zero one. You can't get any lower than that. Don't believe that zero stuff. <laughs> It'll go to four zeros and a one or five zeros and a one. They'll get closer and closer and closer to that zero, but it never really touches zero. So we're bouncing here. One to two, one to two, one to two. But we're getting tighter. Things are getting tighter now. Things are squeezing up. Our nine days pushing, our 20 days pushing, our 50 is pushing. Our, Mac, our PPO is climbing, our MACD is climbing. Things look warm. That's all you can ask for with a triple lot. 
So GXXM, she's got a little bit of heat on the charts. She's actually not doing bad with revenues. I mean, I think AITX, you know, which is a lot better price than this is, has got the same, if not less revenues than this company does. And the company is building up business. They have a strategy they've been working on for three years. I say they one person, Siri. He's been working hard on the company and the revenues are picking up slowly. They're holding strong. The profits are getting stronger. GXXM. It is worth a watch, but it could take time to grow. Our next stock comes to us from Jason Davis. Thank you, Jason. I do appreciate you following me. This is ticker AULT Alt Alliance. All right. You noticed, right? <laughs> That's the great thing about making these videos on the weekend. I can be a little more leisurely about it. So I did do some of it yesterday and I'm doing more today, which is why I look this way. But even though I've changed, the information on the stock hasn't. So we are looking at ticker AULT, Alt Alliance, and I don't know anything about this company. On Friday, she finished today just under nine cents and she was just over 4% gains. She is on the major exchange of the NASDAQ, so you're going to be able to trade this for free. There are no transaction fees trading major exchange stocks, even if they're penny stocks. You don't get away with that with the OTC. And you can trade at pre-market, after-market. You can't do that with the OTC either. So what is Alt Alliance all about? Well, they tell us here they are a diversified holdings company that owns and operates a data center. They mine Bitcoin and they provide mission critical products that support a diverse range of industries, which include, let me take a deep breath here, oil exploration, crane services, defense aerospace, industrial, automotive, medical biopharma, consumer electronics, hotel operations, and textiles. In addition, Alt Alliant extends credit to select entrepreneurial businesses through licensed lending subsidiary. That's a wide spectrum of industries. Everything from oil to hotels to textiles to lending money. So they're doing it all, including mining Bitcoin. So what was the relative volume around the company today? Oh, we had a big drop going from about 18.5 million down to 10.3 million. Share structure. Now, this is where it gets interesting. We've got ourselves an excellent share structure. Now, just the other day, we were virtually at 70 million shares. Our outstanding share count now is 5.5 million. And you know the float isn't going to be higher than that. So, we've got an excellent float. Now, how did this come to be? The company did a share buyback in a very interesting way. They eliminated 60 million shares. That's how many they bought back. What they are doing is they are creating a new series of stock, Series D preferred shares. You and I trade the Series A, the common stock. The preferred shares are for bigger investors. And what they are doing is they are creating 600,000 Series D preferred shares. Each one of the preferred shares will have 100 shares of common stock. Multiply 100 times 600,000, that gives you 60 million shares. And this has already been done. It's already happened. Now, here's the exciting part, and I don't understand how it all plays out, but they bought these shares off the market at 25 cents each. Current price is under 9 cents. So they are more than doubling the price for these preferred shares. And that's the price they're going to sell these preferred shares at $25 a piece, which is 25 cents a share. This also retires 81% of the shares. That gives us shareholder value just like that. Looking at the market cap, we are now at about a half a million. Checking out the financials for the company. They're doing well. They're doing very well. Back in 2019, they were at 22 million. 2021, they jumped up to 52 million. And now at the end of 2022, we're over 134 million, taking strong profits all the way. We got to take home almost 56 million at the end of 2022. Looking at our quarterlies, well, they're bouncing around from a low of 17 million up to a high of 49 million. And right now we're at about 47 and a half million. And we took home about 17.8 million in profits. Looking at the balance sheet, 
Cash and cash equivalents. We have got about 21 million in the bank. Looks like the company's owed about $18 million. Got about 21 million in inventory. Add up all those assets, we got a total of 378 million. Add up all their debts and liabilities, we got a total of 278 million, which leaves us, the investors, positive stockholder equity of just under 100 million. So we're doing good here. Taking a look at the disclosures. Now, the fact is, they've got a lot of current filings over here. Most of them pertain to the restructuring of their shares. Though there is one filing we need to take a look at, this Form 4. Form 4s are filed whenever the insiders acquire or dispose of shares. And we're primarily interested when they buy them or sell them. Well, this was a purchase by the executive chairman on the 24th of the month, which was just a few days before they created those Series D preferred shares. He got himself 350,000 shares at the going rate of about nine cents. Anytime the insiders buy shares, it's a good thing, and it could be a sign of things to come. Taking a look at the news, well, they don't have any here. As you can see, there's nothing, but they do have news. It's just not real current. I found this news over here at the Globe and Mail. They've got news, but the most recent piece of news is only up to May 5th. Now, we're not going to jump into all of this. We're going to look at one piece of news, but I want to headline a few of these so you can see what's been going on. As I told you, they are doing a lot of work with their shares and their stock. They're creating a Series H preferred stock as well. They are working with their financing, getting help there. Then we've got news here about business. April 27th, the company subsidiary Alt Global Real Estate unveils four newly renovated hotels with grand reopenings. This one we are going to dive into. Alt Alliance subsidiary Bit Nile expands Bitcoin mining collaboration with Core Scientific for 10,000 miners. And then it was just two days later, Core Scientific signs hosting contracts with three other public companies. So let's dive into this piece of news. They tell us here that the company has announced the expansion of the strategic collaboration between its wholly owned subsidiary, BitNile, and Core Scientific, also on the OTC, ticker C-O-R-Z-Q. I believe that Q is telling us they are in bankruptcy right now. The company announced last month that BNI would operate 3,000 pro miners in Core Scientific's existing facility starting in April of this year, but they amended that to 10,000 starting in May, though they are pushing for an ultimate 19,100 miners. And they tell us when all 19,100 miners are energized, we expect our mining operations will generate nearly $60 million a year. So they've got things going on and I haven't gone through all the different streams that they have for revenues. They're working with real estate. They're working with oil and gas. They're working with hotels. They're working with Bitcoin. They've got a lot of different things they're doing, but that's what's going on right now. Let's go take a look at the chart and see what it's doing right now. Well, let's take a look at this radical chart for ticker AULT. This is Alt Alliance. We're looking at a six month, four hour view, which has a very impressive high bubble of $42.30 back in March. In April, she came down to her 200 at about 28 bucks and broke it and fell away from $28 down to under eight cents on November 28th. That is one day before they created that Series D preferred stock. Now, as you can see, she isn't really changing her trend. She's running downhill. She is now laying on top of that 200 day haul. You can see that perfectly. I told you penny stocks are respecting the 200 haul. There's our low bubble of uh, 0 0.078. And then our news came out about the Series D stock and she took a jump up to 12 cents. You're looking at roughly 50% run right there. She came back down and she is sitting on top of that 200 haul and she's starting to push up, but we don't see a lot of heat here. The only thing that looks decent is that our 200 day SMA is finally getting close. And when it gets close enough, this will give her an opportunity to break out. Our oscillators, we see our PPO is just about ready to cross that pink line and come up. We've already had our crossover on our MACD working towards a signal line and we got green bars accumulating and our RSI has been climbing from 40 up to 50 right now. So things are warming up. Looking at our 20-day, one-hour view. Downhill trend, 
breaking through the 200 over and over again, but she can't get her footing. It's just too steep. Every time she jumps up there, she slips and falls back under. We got to get that 200 to start leveling out, and it doesn't look like it's doing it quite yet. Our oscillators are getting warmer. Our PPO is pushing up strong, and our ADX is pushing down strong. That's a pattern, folks. Your ADX tells you trend continuation. Whenever you have a straight line, it doesn't matter if it's going up or down. As long as it's straight, it means whatever trend is on the chart is continuing. Well, one of the patterns I like, my PPO going up, my ADX going down. Whenever I see the blue and the red line spreading apart from each other, I know 100% my stock is going up. Now, it doesn't look strong right now, but it is going up. MACD has just crossed the signal line, and our RSI is now at 56. Taking a look at our five-day, five-minute. Wow. All right, so we had a bounce here five days ago from uh, about $0.08 cents up to $0.11. Cents. Came down to that low bubble, bounced up to that high. She's just all over the place right now, just on both sides of the 200. She's not getting too far away from it if she does. She comes right back real quick. And she is sitting right there on her 200 right now on the top. Oscillators, they look like they're in recovery. Yes, look, look at that. Our PPO has had a quick turnaround and is starting to come up. Same thing with our MACD. Came down and quickly turned around. And our RSI... That's climbing fast. That went from 39 up to 57. Now, we're not seeing a lot of heat here, but we're seeing some heat in the charts. We know that they're going to be making money off of BitNile's Bitcoin mining. They think they can get up to 60 million once they get all 19,000 miners out there. But as long as they're doing some mining and Bitcoin is going up, you know they're making money there too. They got hotels that have just gone up and who knows what else? Well, you will if you do some more due diligence. Matter of fact, do some more due diligence on all the stocks we covered, folks. You know I don't have time to cover everything. And the more you know, come on, say it with me, the more you're going to grow. <laughs> See you, folks.